Hello and welcome to my training videotapes. This is going to be one of the part of a series of videotapes that are designed to teach you how to add particular parts of training into your existing curriculum. This videotape we're going to concentrate on how to add stand-up joint manipulation. We're going to categorize these in different body parts and different body types. So first one we're going to do actually is um, arm bar and arm locks. Before we actually start that, I'd like to go over some of the basic concepts and some principles that are going to help you understand what's, um, what's going to make these techniques work. Okay, so I'm going to ask my partner to come in, Brooke. First one I want to go over with is called the law of non-resistance. And this particular um, concept and the law goes for any hold, any kind of stand of joint manipulation that we're going to be talking about during this whole uh, videotape series. So the non-resistance has four different motions. So imagine when somebody grabs me, right now there's four possibilities. One, he's either pushing me, pulling me, not doing anything, or he's grabbing me. So first one I'm going to cover is if he pushes me, I'm going to go with him. Then I'll do whatever technique that comes afterwards. Next one is, what if he pulls me? When he pulls me, I go with him. Then I use the concept of circular motion, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes. I'm going to step out of the way. Next one is, what if he doesn't do anything? He's grabbing me really hard. So what I do, I create the energy. In order for me to redirect it, I have to have some kind of energy. So what I'll do, I'll step in, pushing forward, and he'll resist. When he resists, his force is going that way. So I take the force, and I do whatever technique that I have to do. That's the third possibility. The fourth one, as the most powerful one, is redirecting his energy while he's grabbing me. So if he's doing a slow motion, I'm going to drop and come right up while he's grabbing me. One more time. So if I slow motion this while his hand is coming, there is a force. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this force, go with it, then I'm going to step in and do whatever technique it is. Don't be so concerned about an arm lock, wrist lock, or whatever it is. The concept is non-resistance. So really quick, so the four motions is if he pushes, if he pulls, if he doesn't do anything, which I'm going to create energy, or while he's doing it. So those are the four things into the law of non-resistance. Ne next one is the circular motion. And, uh, what I want you to remember in circular motion, there's going to be a lot of times, if you're doing realistic joint lock, is that the person is going to resist. And I'm going to be talking about stepping out of the way. Use lateral movements later, rather than linear movements. So on this one, like if I do an arm bar, and if you resist, what I'll do, I'll step out of the way, basically. And I'll make myself in a circular motion bring him down. So that's what I'm going to talk about um, in the holds that we're going to do. Next one is a concept of energy which travels through open fingers. So one thing I want you to do at home, and you can actually do this with me, is go ahead and grab your wrist, keep your fingers open, make a fist, open. Do you feel like your wrist actually expands? And what that really means is that when somebody grabs your wrist, I always want to keep my fingers open so I can do stuff with them later. Second is, the energy truly travels in open fingers. That's why in my personal opinion, um, palm strike would have more internal damage than actually a fist. Because by doing, causing, by making a fist, your energy is actually going back to you. Right? In open hand fingers, you're actually traveling. That's one of the reasons when you walk on a carpet, if you touch someone, the electricity goes right through and hits the other person. In order to demonstrate this, um, Aikido masters demonstrate the unbendable arm, which is no way, it's a magical thing. If you train, you can do it. And all, it's, it's very simple. Okay, if, you, if you watch my hand here, and I want him to bend my arm, notice I'm resisting right now, and I'm tightening up. But I'm really resisting, and he's, he's, that's good. Now, he's really strong. He's stronger than me physically, and he's taller than me. He can do this. But notice this time, if I keep my fingers open and reach for that wall over there, completely relax, he can do that all day long. And I'm not even resisting. He will not be able to bend my arm, because my energy is traveling through open fingers. So we're going to be talking a lot about energy and keeping your fingers open. Next principle that I want to go with is balance. No stand-up joint manipulation or ground or any kind of fighting situation. Nothing will work unless I throw him off balance. This goes mentally 
and physically. We're just going to concentrate on the physical aspect right now. So what, what it means is that if I do an arm bar, he's standing up really straight, really strong. Oh, I can do this all day long. I need to throw him off balance before I can make things work. And the way I do it, I look at his belt. If I can shake him a little bit, then I got him all the way down. And I can do whatever I want to do with him later on. But the whole point is, I need to make sure he's off balance. If he's standing up really solid, there's no way this is going to work. And you can do that by a couple different things. Like I can hit him in the thigh. I just look at his belt. The belt moved. That means his midsection is off balance. Then I can make the armbar work. Okay? So I need any kind of distraction. So that's what I mean by the balance. Next thing that we're going to go about is having a distinction between the static and dynamic training. And basically what that means is that you want to start with the static training, which means we're going to go over some techniques and it'd be like grab, put it on your stomach, open fingers, step in, take down. This is really, really important for you to later on to get into the actual dynamic moves we're going to do later on. So it's really important you understand there is a step by step doing this, which is the static training. Then we get into the actual dynamic training, which is more energy drills. The next thing is I want to make sure you guys have a distinction between the technique and the concept. So the concept that we're going to be covering um, in this videotape is an arm bar or arm block, which is really the same thing. The concept is going against a joint. And for right now, we're going to cover the elbow joint. The difference between concept and technique is that concept is like teaching somebody how to fish and giving somebody fish for dinner. So we're going to talk about a, a few different uh, techniques that I've come up with and they've been around for years. And uh, we're going to talk about a couple techniques how to do armbar, but as long as you understand the concept of the armbar and why it causes pain and takes a person down, then we'd be fine. So it's really important you have the, the distinction between the having a technique and a concept. So again, let's go recap really, really fast going over all the stuff that we need to do before we start training. One was a law of non-resistance. Two was circular motion. Three was understanding energy level and open fingers. Fourth one was balance, how to throw him off. Next one was the distinction between static and dynamic training. And the last one was understanding the difference between technique and concept. So let's go start training. OK, here's the first thing we're going to do. In order to make, make things a little bit easier to understand, um, I want to categorize armbar into armbar number one and armbar number two. And basically, the distinction is the way my left hand grabs the wrist, which is one time is thumb up and one time is thumb under. OK, this will be a great two ways you can actually start the training for armbars. Or if you choose to teach it, this will be the first thing that I would teach. So we're going to start by introducing you to what we call a C-grip. Okay, this is called a C grip. This is actually the letter C in sign language. Okay, so the way it is is that the thumb goes under the wrist and it rests on the wrist. And the four fingers go straight over. And what happens is that I have total control over the joint. This is what we call the C grip. Common mistake in C grip is don't have holes in your grips. So you don't want to grab like this or grab like this when there's actually a hole in the grip. So with a C grip, Okay, I'm going to stand right by him. We both stand ready position. I'm going to grab the C grip, bring it to my stomach. Okay, open fingers. And we talked about why open fingers in the beginning. Now, what I want to do, I want to go slightly above his elbow and put my wrist bone, which is the hard bone, right on top. And I want to put that right on top. And if you travel the elbow bone a little bit higher, there'll be actual little spot that your, your bone can actually rest on. Another thing I want you to remember in armbar. Just like you try to push a car, because we need pushing motion in this one in armbar. When you want to push a car, you wouldn't go right foot back and push with your right hand, because that would, wouldn't give you enough force. So the way to do it is same hand, same foot forward. That gives you the most pushing power. So the armbar, what I want you to remember is that when you open the fingers, whichever hand is pushing, that foot steps forward. That th makes it really easy to kind of remember. That does not mean this will make it wrong. Because this training is not about right or wrong. It's doing it the proper way and a better way to doing it. Okay, so again, I'm going to grab, bring it to my stomach, keep it against my body weight, open fingers, step right foot forward. I'm going to go to a front stance. I'm going to kind of keep it classical for right now. Open fingers, and I'm going to go to a back stance and take him all the way down. When he's down, we're just going to talk about two different finishes in this training tape for number one and number two. This will be number one. I do not let go of him. 
I step left foot out, I'm still in the front stance, come forward, I put my right knee on top of his shoulder, I'm going to press down and pull it out, so it pu pu pushes the joint out of the way. When he taps out, I'll walk away, preferably I like to walk away, away from the head, because I want to stay away from his legs, then he gets up. So we're going to call that arm bar number one, let's try that again. Okay, so do this with me while you're at home. So we're going to grab C-grip on the stomach, open fingers. Since this is my right hand, I'm going to step right foot, front stance, turn him to the side. Notice my finger is still pointing towards him. Step in, rest it on my thigh, press down. Okay, one of the things important here is to make sure my head, my shoulder, my hips and my knees are aligned. I don't want to be bent over like this because I'll be off balance. So I'm going straight down, and I concentrate on putting the energy straight towards him. Then I'll walk away. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and go to armbar number two. In armbar number two, we use a small little principle called blanketing. Blanketing means if I want to end up with his wrist, if I just reach for his wrist, he can pull his wrist out, and I won't be able to catch it. It's a matter of speed game, and I don't want to play the speed game. So what I do, I start from his shoulder. So I blanket the hand so I end up with the wrist. So what that means is that while I do this, if he pulls back slowly, I end up with the wrist anyway. Because that's called a blanketing. So I'm going to reach over, twist it all the way to my chest. Same concept, notice the grip is different. Open fingers, same hand, same hand, same foot forward, taking them all the way down. Just for the sake of variety, we're going to finish a little bit differently. In this one, I'm going to have him rest on my shoulder with his palm facing out. Both palms, my palms, facing up. I'm going to pull in and push forward with my shoulder at the same time. Okay, then walk away. Come on up. That's armbar number two. So one more time, please. Now remember, grab me. Okay, in armbar, <coughs> armbar number two, I can do it from any grab, which we're going to get into. But for right now, let go, please, um, is we're going to talk about blanketing again, reaching over, bring it up to the chest open fingers, step forward and down. That's really important from here. I want to make sure, come on up please a little bit. I want to make sure my fingers are right towards him. Because he slighted movement or resistance from him. I'm going to throw him off balance, gets down to it, I'm going to strike. Now I could have a knife in my hand, it could be my gun on top, it could be a stick, it could be anything right here. Okay, and I'm taking him down, but my energy is towards him when he goes down. Come on up please. So practice the armbar number one and two. Again, with the number one being side to side, number two being facing each other, because everything else we do today in the training tapes is going to be a variation of number one and two. Okay, now we're going to go over some of the actual techniques and drills that we do in our curriculum. And this is how we actually teach the students going through different ranks. And these are the techniques or the ways to disguise repetition of the concept of armbar. We're going to start from the inside wrist grab. Notice when he grabs me, the first thing is, Keep my fingers wide open. And this particular one, there's a couple ways to do this. One that I like is palms together, dropping my knees, coming up, grabbing, and ending up in armbar number one. The next one is the same thing. I'm going to put my hand on top of his hand so he won't let go. I'll do the same thing. Drop, bring my fingers, point up, step in. Again, I'll end up in armbar number one. Okay, again, one more time. So the first one was palms together. Second one, put my hand on top so he won't let go. Notice I'm not going to make this circular motion with my fingers. I'm going to drop down and bring my fingers straight up. Then I'm going to turn into an armbar number one. Another variation of this one is I'm going to grab his wrist, step out, turn around. So I can strike from here, then I can end up in armbar number one again. One more time. This one is particularly good if he pulls me. So if he pulls me across, I use that force with him, and I end up at armbar number one again. Okay. The next one, the third variation, is I'm going to grab his wrist, reach across from down here, and go all the way up. And I'm going to turn the hand. I'm going to press down at the same time. So notice I'm still. It's a cut at armbar. What we call a reverse armbar. I'm going underneath the elbow at the same time. Okay. Again. So from here, I don't have to reach all the way. I can grab here and just press down at the same time. If he's a really big guy and really strong, I'll go under his arm. Notice I grab, go under, and pick it up. So I'm still doing the same concept. I'm just doing a reverse arm bar, going straight across. So again, 
The variations were palms together, putting the hand on top. We're going to duck under and end up with an arm bar. We did grabbing the collar, pressing straight forward, or grabbing really hard, reach and press straight up. So those are the variations from the inside wrist. Now let's go to outside wrist. Come on this side book, please. These are a little bit more variations starting from this one. We're going to start armbar number one. So I'm thinking, how am I going to from here end up in armbar number one? So the way I do it, see this right here, this little loop that I have between my index finger and my thumb. So I'm going to drop, put his hand resting, kind of cradle the wrist, come up and give it to my hand. Now I got armbar number one. Again, so I drop down, give it to my other hand. I got armbar number one. I can reach over a blanket, bring it up, at the same time break his thumb. Notice with my wrist, end up in armbar number two. Notice a different grip. One more time. So I'm going to drop, come up, break the thumb, step in to armbar number two. Okay. The next one, there's many diff different variations of this. Next one I'm going to do from here, I'm going to get my thumb to twist out. Notice I'm going out. I'm going to re-grab the wrist and twist it. One more time. So I'm going to step out and re-grab re it and twist it. Now I'm going to step back. Right foot back. Now I still got an arm bar. Okay. Now notice the footing for this arm, but still the same hand, same foot, still forward. Again. So my thumbs goes out, stepping back, straight arm bar. Okay. Go back. Okay. So so far, remember we've done arm bar number one armbar number two, and the thumb out. Next one we can do, it's the same thumb out one, grab both hands, step in. Since I already got my right arm busy, I don't have to use my right hand, I can do it with my shoulder. See, it's the same concept. Reality, what would happen is that I would walk right into and actually break the elbow. Okay? So from this one, next one will be, I'm going to actually duck under it. So I'm going to grab the hand, duck, slice any kind of strike, then go back to armbar number one again. So from here like this again, if he pulls me, I'm going to go with him, use the force, and end up in armbar number one so far. Okay. From here like this, also if he's really strong, notice I'm creating a little opening, I can grab, duck, with my elbow press straight down. Again, so I can go here, go under, and press straight up. That's reverse armbar. Okay, so those will be all the different versions from inside wrist and from outside wrist. Okay, so let's go over the all the variations of the armbar again from outside wrist. Remember, the first one was actually cradling the hand and putting it on top to go to armbar number one. The next one we did was going to armbar number two. Next one we did, we ducked under, turned around, and went to armbar number one. We did another one with a thumb out, two different versions. One was stepping back to an arm bar, one was stepping forward using my shoulder. And we also did one that we went duck under and using my shoulder to press up. These are going to be some of the drills we actually do in our classes. I'm going to cover some double wrist grab from behind, from the wrist, from the sleeve. I'm going to go over some defenses against a reverse punch, some of the things we can do by opening up the arm bar and not thinking you can only do it with your arm. You can actually do it with your leg. And I'm going to go over some belt grabs. So let's start with double wrist from the back. Okay. So on these, these again, these are all the ways to disguise repetition. So the first one I'm going to do from here like this is I'm going to grab the wrist. Notice with my left hand, I'm going to grab. I'm going to step by and behind him, and I end up with open fingers. Now I can take him straight down. That's a variation of number one. Now if I choose to finish it, I have to spin around and finish it still with the same one, which is armor number one. Come on up, please. I'm going to do that for you one more time. So from here like this, I'm going to go this way now. I'm going to grab it, keep it on my back, bring it up and over, and turn him straight down. That's still armor number one. Okay, next one. From here like this, I'm actually going to bend my elbows, step out, open the fingers straight up, and pass this hand to the other one. Step back, and I end up in the arm bar again. One more time. So from here, I'm going to pass it to the other hand and to an arm bar. Another way to disguise repetition is that from here like this, I'm going to step back with my elbow, and I'm going to get rid of his hand. When I get rid of it, 
Now I'm just going to treat it like an inside wrist. I can put my hand over and take him straight down. One more time. So I'm going to step back, get rid of that hand, put my hand on top, and end up with it again. Those will be the double wrist ones. Now from double sleep, I'm going to introduce you to a concept that I like to use a lot, and that's the power of the circular motion. Notice from here like this, I'm just going to circle with my hand, duck under, his hand, his hand actually will end up in between my elbow, hand on top. Another variation of the armbar. I don't have to hold the wrist. It just gets caught right there. One more time. From the sleeve, I'm circular motion, duck and straight down. Okay, coming back. Okay, now we're going to go to actually from doing um, arm bars from a cross or a jab, doesn't matter. So from here, a conventional way, very easy way to do it is when he, step, when he punches, I'm going to step out to the side, do an outside block. Again, so when he does it, I'm going to step out to the side. Now notice from here I can grab it and now I'm armbar number one. One more time. So I can step out to the side, grab it, I'm an armbar number one. Now, I can do a check system, which means I can check with the left hand from here, and actually I strike to the face, then I can step into an armbar. Again, so when he punches, I'm checking, striking to the eyes, step in. Now remember, I don't have to do an armbar, I can do an arm break from here. Again, so my check is actual strike to the face. The other one goes to the face, I grab it, I break it at the same time. When I break it, then I'm going to step into an armbar. Now from a punch, I can also end up in armbar number two. And the way to do it when a punch comes, I'm going to step out the other way. Notice my thumbs gets on top, bring it back, now I'm in armbar number two. Again, let's do a quick review. So I can step out to the side, right hand only. I can check it, go into it, or I can step the other way and twist it and step into it. Those will be all the versions for right now from against a punch. The last one we're going to do is a belt grab, which means if he reaches over to grab my belt, natural tendency here is to do armbar number two, which is twist this. But remember, I'm thinking, armbar number one, number two, number one ends up in my stomach. He's already there. So by me turning, that's already armbar number one. I don't have to do a whole lot. One more time. So if you grab, by me holding him, stepping back, what does this remind you of? Armbar number one, side to side. So I can still do the regular one. Again, let's go back really quick and review everything. We did double wrist from behind. We did a couple of different ways of doing it. From here like this, we did one with getting rid of the arm. From here, we did one with holding on to it. We did one with ducking under, giving it to the other hand. Double sleeve one, we did one with a circular motion. We ended up with an arm bar. From the punch, we did one stepping out of the way, grabbing, doing an arm bar. We did one with a check system, stepping it to an arm bar. We ended up going the other way, straight to an arm bar. And we did it from the belt grab, which is twisting. Now remember, you feel free to take any of these and add your little spices into it. And that's what makes it your style. One of the things I really want you to remember is that in doing an arm bar, you're not limited by just using your hand. Remember, it's a concept that we're after. So if you get in a position where you're doing an arm bar, you're going halfway down, and he starts resisting, I'm not going to get down to his position to do something. I can use my leg to finish the rest of the arm bar. Or from here like this, if he goes halfway again, from here I can kick my leg over and use the back of my thigh to still create the same position as doing an arm bar. Okay? And also, remember, what you can do and this is very important. This is where the beauty of, the, of, of freedom of what we're talking about comes out. And that's whatever you can do to the arm, the joint, you can do to any part of the body. So from here like this, I can step in and do the same thing that I did to joint to his elbow. I can do it to his leg, to his knee, by grabbing the ankle and taking him straight down. So that's still an arm bar done to the leg, which ends up with it to be a leg lock. So I don't want you to think like you're limited to any of those. So like especially for some of the cops and stuff, imagine if I'm holding a gun here, and if you reach for the gun from here like this, all I have to do, I can have my hand open, but just simply turning my hip will actually use, use him to do an armbar. Okay, so I'm not, I don't want you to think you're limited by just doing the hand. 
From here, you can use your shoulder, your hip, your head, any part of your body against it. Or if you're in a situation like a telephone booth, or you have a desk or something, you can actually put the elbow against the wrist. Another good thing about doing armbar, it's good for if when you're fighting multi, you know, people, more than one person. So what happens is, from here, I can actually use an armbar to throw him to somebody else. I can actually defend myself and keep him there in a position that I can fight him. These are going to be some great drills that you can actually use in your classroom or training with your partner to be able to disguise the repetition. Another way to do an um, armbar is off your shoulder. I'm going to give you some examples like that. So from the outside wrist grab, notice I'm going to come up. Since it's already up, I'm going to place it on my shoulder. From here like this, I'm going to put it up against the elbow, turn his elbow over, grab my wrist, and step straight back. So that's another version of the armbar. One more time. So notice I'm going to drop, bring it on my shoulder, stepping back, straight down. I'm going to do the, the same technique of fighting stance, please. If he does a cross, notice I'm going to block at the same time. I'm going for the eyes. So one more time, please. So when he does that, I'm going to shin kick at the same time, step out from here like this. I'm going to step in. I'm going to break the arm, which is still a reverse arm bar. I can break it straight down. I can also, when he does this, I can strike, duck. Now that elbow is still straight, I can strike it with my shoulder. Again, so when he punches, I'm going to straight, go duck, break it right here. That's a reverse arm bar. Or I can duck and strike it with the other shoulder. Okay, so really quick, go over them again. So from the outside wrist, we went over the shoulder. From the punch, we did two different ways. I can duck from here and go under, or I can complete the circle and straight down. Or I can step out to the side, circle, and it ends up in my arm. One more time. So check it, bring it down, give it to the other hand, and bring it straight down. So these will be some of the ways to disguise repetition of doing arm bars over the shoulder. Now, since we're talking about techniques and disguise and repetition, next one will be the knife. So can you grab a knife, please? Again, with a live blade or with a practice knife, if he steps in, my two options are, one, I'm going to step out of the way. So first thing I'm going to do. Now, I would not want to step in to do an armbar, obviously, because his blade will go right into me. Okay? So a some, some, couple of things I'm going to do. I'm going to step out to the side. I'm going to attack the arm, break it. So I'm going to break it, get out of the way. So I'm completely away from the knife. I'm going to do a disarm stripping, which I'm going to cover in one of my next tapes, how to um, actually strip the knife out. I'm going to strip the knife and use the knife to actually go to armbar number one. Watch that again. So my hands are up. I'm stepping out to the side. I'm going to break it and get out of the way. Attack the knife and push it straight down. So I end up in armbar number one. I can do stuff to actually end up in armbar number two, and that's by doing cross blocks, reaching over, same concept again. But I wouldn't want to bring it to my chest, for obvious reasons. So this time, I'm going to bring it up, twist it, attack the knife towards him, turn it, and I got armbar number two. From here, actually, I can use a knife against him. Again, remember, you're not limited to what we're teaching you actually here. You can just broaden your mind and think about what ifs. And that's how you're going to see the beauty of this whole thing. In the beginning of the tape, we mentioned a couple of different things. One of them was understanding the difference in static and dynamic training. And this is where my love and passion comes for the martial arts is through the dynamic training, because I truly believe it's more live. So the dynamic training, one of the drills that we do is called the armbar drills, and the other one is called the tie-in and tie-out drill. Um, we're going to start with the arm, basic armbar drills, which we do often in our classes. So on this one, the first concept before we actually start is the clock principle. So imagine your target and your opponent is always 12 o'clock. And I'm standing in the middle of a clock. So that would be 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, all the way to 6 o'clock, and all the way back to 12. So the first thing I'm going to work on is understanding the clock principle. So if that's 3 o'clock, I'm going to step with the closest foot and step back to the other back. So from here like this, if I want to go from 3 go to 9 o'clock, I'm going to step left foot and right foot back. So if, if my opponent is over there, please stand over there. If he attacks me, I'm going to go 9 o'clock, stepping out to the side. Or I'm going to go preferably 11 o'clock, which is right by him. And I end up, go back. Or if he steps with the left, 
Okay, from here like this, I wouldn't preferably, I wouldn't want to go this way because I'm walking into his other hand. So when he does this hand from here like this, I'm going to go to a one o'clock. So it'll be right and left foot. Now, after understanding the clock principle and drilling this over and over again, we're getting into the armbar drills. Now, I want you to make sure you understand, just because this drill could be applied in any, any particular joint lock. Right now, we're just going to talk about armbar. He's going to come straight down motion, and my both hands will go from here like this, in a circular motion, go with him at the same time. One more time, please. So I'm going to step one o'clock and get him in armbar, but I'm going to let him go. He stands up. Now he's my 12 o'clock again. Maybe this time he'll do left. When he does, I'm going to take two steps and get out of the way. Let him go. He comes up again. So all I'm basically working on right now is keep, keep going. I'm just going to sidestep him at the same time. There you go. And I'm just getting myself into the armbar position. That's a regular one. Now, instead of going like this, he could be doing a straight punch to me. I would treat it the same way. So notice, I'm still doing the same footwork from here. So, so far, we've done straight down, we've done punch. Now, while I do an armbar, he can grab my wrist. When he does, I do the exact same thing. I'm still back to an armbar. So it doesn't matter if he goes over, if he punches me, or if he grabs. I'm going to treat it the same way. Now, he could also come down. I could go to an armbar and notice I'm not in a good position. So I'm going to duck and get myself in the better position. Again, he comes straight down. I go for it and go, mm, I'm going to add one turn into it. Then go right back to armbar again. Okay, this time, when I'm doing the armbar drills, he might do a spinning backhand. Okay, stop for a second. When he does, notice my hand will stick with him, cover him, and actually go with him. So if he does it again, turning, I'll go with him to armbar. Again, straight down. So we covered going straight down, come straight. He punches. I treat it the same way. He grabs. I treat it the same way. Does a spinning backhand. I treat it the same way. He comes straight down again. I duck and I go back down. Now from here like this, not all the time it's going to be that particular angle. Sometimes it might throw a hook. So watch, if he does straight down again, and this time he does a hook, okay? So from here like this, I'm going to hit him at the same time, which is watch the stop hit. So while he's hooking me, my hand comes, raises the arm, and I go back to an arm bar. So if he hooks me again, look how short this distance is right now between me and him. So when the hook again, so what he does, I'm going to hit him. Then I'm going to duck, I'm going to go back to the armbar drill. Now if he does it again, punches me, straight punch, I'm going to grab, I can do a pretzel. We covered this before. So one more time, he comes straight down, he punches me, I hold on to the wrist, and I can actually do a pretzel to him. Okay, so let's do a quick review of all the armbar drills. He comes straight down, sidestep, he punches, I sidestep. From here he does a spinning backhand. I go with him. He hooks. I strike at the same time. Go under. He comes straight down again. I can duck and use my shoulder or my regular arm bar from here. Okay? This would be a great way for you to get a whole class going and try to practice the arm bars in a more dynamic version rather than static version. Next one we're going to do, I've borrowed this from the Filipino art which I love dearly because of the, the whole idea of dynamic training versus static. It's called a tie-in and tie-out drill, or what they call the hubud. And the way you do it is stand face each other. I'm just going to have him do it with a straight punch, uh, with a straight come downward strike. So he's going to come down. I'm going to check, raise, slap, hit. So he's going to block, raise, slap, hit. Block raise, slap, hit. And we just go back and forth doing that. Okay? This is a great dr energy drill that you can do a lot of stuff from this energy drill. So from here, since I'm working on arm bars, I can use that force and go right to arm bars and feed him again and go back into it. So from here like this, notice I'm going right to the arm bar, coming back into it. Okay? Now from a hubat, you can also, instead of downward strike, he could punch me. 
So I could check, raise, slap, hit. Check, raise, slap, hit. Okay. There you go. Check, raise. Now when here, when I check it, I could go in right to the arm bar. That would be a good dynamic way of doing it. And also when he does this, okay, while we're doing this, there you go, keep going. I can feel his force. One of these times with his right hand, he's going to push me. When he pushes me from here, I'm going to use that force. Okay, because there is such a thing as muscle memory, right? So your body will actually remember when it's being pushed. So next time he pushes the shoulder, my body will know, oh, I've been there before. It's a point of reference for me, and I'm going to end up with an arm bar. Again, take these two drills and really work on them together. The hubud, which is a tie-in and tie-out drill, and the arm bar drills. The different variation with the concept of the clock principle. In my next training tapes, we're going to break down more of the wrist locks, go actually into lock flows a lot more, and getting into the weapons. So have a good time training.